My name is Ivan Vukomanovic, and this season I will be your head coach. My job here will be to take decisions. Some of those decisions will not be in your own interest. Some of those decisions will not be in my interest neither. But it will always be in our team's interest. Because football is a team sport. And therefore, the team always come at the first place. We are all representing one huge community in this country. Our club is special. Our fans are special. That's why we always have to do something special when we go outside over there on the pitch. Our opponents must never be more motivated than us, especially when we are playing our home games. You are all wearing one important logo on your shirt. Honor it. These words are similar are the words that I use every season at the beginning of our season. Some of those words are as a refreshment for all of us working for a while in our organization and a warm welcome to all new players and new staff members. Many leaders in their organization, they use motivational talks, talks to influence their teams before the start of a new project or a new cycle. For me, it's at the beginning of every season and it continuously on a daily basis with all the staff members, players, fans, media, etc. Actually, the job of our management is to create and organize the group of 25, 30 players, trying to organize them in a great group to achieve positive results. When I say 25, 30 players, it's only a players group. I didn't mention here the whole other people, the bunch of people working behind all those players in order to provide them all the possible services to get the positive results. So, huge management organization from the top to the bottom working together. Actually, when we look at our scouting process, it goes deeply into all personalities and characters of all those people gathering together. Why? And we ask ourselves how we achieve all those things, where we can find the energy to do it on a daily basis, day by day, year by year. So actually, when we go into that scouting process, we exactly know what kind of characters we need. Because we have all different characters, we have all different mentalities, actually coming from all different parts of the world. The world evolves today so quickly that sometimes we are not capable of following anymore all these new technologies, a new car, a new phone, a new computer. One of the best qualities that the man can have today is to try to adapt to cert certain circumstances and try to follow all those things. If you are not quality, if you, if you don't have that quality to follow that and to adapt, we could be left behind. In my job as a coach of collective sport, today a coach has to adapt to all possible members of your team, players group, management staff, medical, technical staff. Why? Because we need to get maximum out of everybody, because you need to create a good team, you need to create a get good atmosphere. At the end, all of us together, we need to create a great result, because it's our obligation. So let me tell you one story here. As a 21 years old boy, I get the chance and I went abroad to one foreign country and where I actually felt for the very first time the cruel part of professionalism. I arrived in one country where English language was not a mother tongue. So for me, everything was quite new and interesting. Arriving in that club, who actually had invested a huge amount of money in me, the expectations were big. As a young boy arriving in a club, the coaching staff was speaking English to me. Some of the teammates in the dressing room, they were speaking English to me. Some of the medical staff, they were speaking English to me. And my feeling was like, wow, awesome. I can use my English here. So it will be easy. So the coaching staff with the head coach, they were very polite, explaining me all the possible rules of engagement, all the tasks that I have to do, all the possible details that we have to perform together again in order to achieve the positive results. So a couple of days later, we were playing our first game. Before the game, there is a team talk meeting where the coach, head coach is giving all the instructions to all the players, what are your tasks during that game. And the coach started team talk in French. So, because we were in France. He started giving all the possible tasks to all the individual players, explaining them what they have to do. 
And then he arrived to my name on the board. He started and I was frozen. I couldn't understand a single word. The only thing I could understand it was my name. And he started talking to me in French, explaining me all the possible details. I must admit, I was afraid. So, lucky enough, I had one teammate behind me touching my shoulder saying, don't worry, I'll explain you later. I translate you later. We played the game, we won. Tomorrow, before the training session, I had a chat with the head coach. At the end of that chat, he told me something that I will never forget. He said, listen, Ivan, here we speak French, and it will be in your best possible interest that you adapt as soon as possible, that you learn French language as soon as possible. Don't worry, the club will provide you a teacher. If you want that the club accepts you, if you want that your teammates in the dressing room accept you, if you want that the media accepts you, if you want that the fans accept you, at the end, if you, if you want that I accept you, you have to do it. You have to do it, actually. You have to adapt. You have to learn it. Otherwise, you can go quickly back from where you are coming from. And it was quite surprising for me in that moment. The shock of that effect, of that sentence at the end, that I could go back home, actually, where I'm coming from, was for me kind of waking up, saying, hell, I'm not going home. I'm here to succeed. I'm here to do something for the sake of my family. Because in that moment also in my home country, there was a civil war. So I had to do it. So very quickly after that, what happened? I started with my French lessons. Beside all my obligations in the club, on a daily basis, with training sessions, flying around Europe, playing all those games, somehow I find a way to go into evening school twice a week, sometimes even three times a week. And let's say in a matter of a couple of months, I started with the fact that people started understanding me. So the point of this story, in your life, you will find yourself many times against many obstacles. These obstacles are nothing but challenges. Accept them and embrace them because they will help you and they will create your personality. They will help you becoming a better version of yourself for the future. So then the next part that I want to talk to you about the part and the thing that I find very important, but we see it rarely in our daily tasks and challenges is passion. Passion that we input into our daily work, passion that we input into our daily, let's say, relationship, all possible details. What is passion? Passion is something that pushes you uh, doing something crazy when nobody believes in you. Passion is something that when everybody says that it's possible to do, you find the force, you find something inside yourself to do it. Passion is something that keeps your dreams alive. Okay, many of us, we have from our environment or maybe neighborhood or families, we have uh, someone who is waking up every morning, going for work, going to do something maybe that he doesn't like, but he has to do it. He has to do it, why? For the family. He has to do it for the, to prevent the food, the shelter for his family. That's how it goes. That's how it goes in life. So I'll tell you one more story. The 10th of April, 1991. My favorite team, who in that period was playing a great football in Euro on European level. Actually, in Europe, we have this so-called Champions League, where actually the best teams from all European countries, they compete in the best competition. And then at top, of course, maybe you heard about it. There is always one winner. So three years in a row, my favorite team arrived to a level almost to the finals. And that year, 10th of April, they were playing in semifinals against one of the best German teams. We were at home watching the TV. After conceding a goal, our team responded, scoring two goals. We won the game. I was so happy, joy, uh, emotions. I started shouting. Me and my brother, we started discussing whose team is better. What is the point of football? All these different stories. And then from nowhere, our mother entered like it was the the shortest box fight I was ever participated in. In a couple of seconds, both of us were laying on our bed. And always after those situations, first she was beating us and then asking what happened. So in that moment, we were like, no, nothing happened. We were just discussing, okay, then be quiet and shut up. And then the phone rang. 
one of my good friends who was living close to me, he was calling me saying, listen, did you see it? We won them. We, we will beat them. We go to the finals in next 14 days. We will play the next game. We will beat them. And I was still like on the ground, like a boxer, you know, getting out of the ropes, trying to stand up. And he was telling, look, in two weeks, we are going to the capital to watch the game. My father just said he will be driving. Would you like to come with us? I was like opening my eyes, said, yeah, of course I would. I want to participate. I want to see that game, of course. So the very next day, I was thinking how to tell my mother about it. Of course, nobody sane would allow 13 years old boy to go to, to the capital to see some stupid game. No chance. So back then, we were as a kids, we were getting some change, some money for, a, let's say, breakfast or food where we're going to school. And actually, I was telling my mother about my plan, that I would go to the capital city with my friend, his father, that we will be driving there. It takes four hours to go there, four hours to come back, because I wanted to watch the game. No, you are not allowed to go. And I was like, but why, mom? Everything will be all right. We will be, we'll go together, we'll go by car, we'll be back after midnight, so there is no problem. No, you are not allowed to go, you must not go. And then... I responded like, I don't care. Anyway, I will go. And then the, the sentence, she said, if you go, I will literally kill you. Arriving in capital city, I actually realized what I've done. I didn't know nobody in that capital city except my aunt. So the only thing I knew how to go across the square, get the tram number 12 and get to her place. So I did that. I arrived in the front of the building. She was not home. She was at work. It was around noon. I remember buying some salty bread sitting in front of the building waiting for her. Later on when she arrived and she saw me, she was amazed. She was like, what are you doing here? I said, I came to see my favorite team tonight. Oh my goodness, at what time they're playing? Tonight, 8.45. Does your mother know you're here? No. She will kill you, you know that. Yeah, I know. So then we went upstairs. She called my mother. I can assure you, I literally hear her shouting and screaming through the mountains and tunnels all around. She was literally telling, don't come back home. I will literally beat the hell out of you. So then my aunt helped me to go to the stadium. I didn't care. I will watch the game. The moment we entered the stadium, I lost my voice. I lost, I lost myself. Something pressed my lungs. All that crowd, all that power, all those emotions everything what was happening around for the first time in my life, it was something unbelievable for me. During the first half, our team scored. Everybody went crazy. Everybody was happy. Me, I was like, is it possible that we will reach the finals? Is it possible that we will qualify? Is it possible that we will beat this great German team who is assembled to win the European title? Everybody was full of joy. In the second half, German team showed their value. They responded in no time, in five minutes, they scored two goals. Everybody was in doubt. I was thinking, is it possible that we will get eliminated? Is it possible that we will have now trouble again to reach the finals? And then, the miracle. In the very last minute of the game, our team scored the goal. The eruption, the joy. I never experienced such a noise in my life as a young boy. In no time, in two minutes, the referee blew the end of the game. Everybody was happy. In no time, everybody was on the pitch celebrating the night to remember. Later on, on the way back home, in the, sitting in the car, the adrenaline was still in, our, in my veins. I was so happy and proud witnessing those moments. But on the other hand, I was so ashamed and worried about my mother back home, you know, because I let her down. I did all those things without her approval. So arriving at home, my friend's father walked me to the door. My mother opened. She was crying. He said, don't be hard on him. He's a good boy. The game was good. We qualified. Everything was all right. Have a good night. The moment he left, I told her, listen, you can do anything you want now. I don't care. We qualified for the finals. And I will tell you one more thing. One day, I will be playing there in that stadium. One day, I will be playing down there in front of that crowd in my favorite club. She didn't say nothing. 
She was crying. And then I started crying. I don't know why. Maybe emotions, joy, all that adrenaline, fear. Who knows? Then she helped me taking off my backpack, my jacket, kissing me. And then she beat me. One month later, my favorite club became the champion of Europe. They won the finals. Four years later, I broke my leg playing one football game. The surgery was needed. It couldn't get done in my hometown. It had to be done in the capital city. While in the capital city, driving in a taxi, going to the hospital next to that big stadium, I was telling my mother, one day, one day I will be playing here in this stadium for my favorite club in front of that crowd. And she was like, yeah, all right, but first let's take care that we fix you again, that you can walk normally again. Okay. So four years after the surgery, I was playing for that club in front of that crowd. So the point of the story, dream big, dare to dream big. Do not allow anyone to tell you something or to kill your passion about your dreams. Even if you have to water your dream every day, like a plant, do it. Even if nobody believes in you, no problem. Believe me, you will find at least one person who will believe in you, who will believe in your dreams and who will dream together with you. When you find that person, stick to that person. Stay together and dream big together because anything is possible. Thank you for your time.